Well, moving on now to the fire that has scared most of Delhi. In a follow-up to that fire, where 17 people died, some in their sleep, the FIR has now come out that confirms that every rule had been broken by this hotel. Question we must ask is this, are you and I safe today in any of our cities? If no one from the fire department is checking, if no one from the MCD or the local government is checking, and if the hotels themselves are violating all the rules, then who's taking responsibility? Take a look. Hotel Arpit Palace fire in Delhi's Karol Bagh left 17 dead and over 35 injured. A day after the incident, Miranao accesses the FIR that lists out serious violations that went unchecked in the hotel. The police has now transferred the case to the crime branch. The case is registered and two people have been arrested that the hotel manager and the hotel general manager. The owner is still absconding. Uh, police is investigating the case. As our investigations continued, we expose how lives were lost because authorities shirk responsibility. Delhi's chief fire officer blames the civic body as he washes his hands of any responsibility. Unless some government agency has forwarded the case to me, I am not going for an inspection. In every case, in each case, the case was referred to us by MCD or by the Delhi police. So it is basically they are the licensing authority, we are not the license. We are just informing you this, uh, this building is fit from fire point of view for the occupancy purpose. The Delhi government has directed six fire service teams to inspect hotels across the city to see if they are violating any norms. 17 lives snuffed out as authorities passed the buck. Families which have paid the ultimate price are now left inconsolable. My brother, that uh, some accident happened in Delhi, but we doesn't know that it was so serious. We thought that maybe some minor incident would be happening, but we can't say, we can't express that out of, but we came to know in the evening that he is gone. Till now we haven't seen him yet. His name was Nanda Kumar, he was 32 years old. He just came for work to from the company side, just for a meeting. He, he came on Sunday and it, it happened, yesterday it happened this fire incident in the hotel and there is no proper information how this fire has been occurred. Miranao asks, who is responsible for the 17 deaths due to the fire? Let's debate. I have uh, some quick questions to ask you. Here are my questions. Do you have family members who travel on work on a regular basis and stay in hotels? Do you have family members who are traveling right now? Every time you've stayed in a hotel, do you check whether all of the fire safety mechanisms are working, where the fire exit is, whether or not the exits are blocked? Does your office check before they book you into a hotel if that hotel is fire safe? There's a lot that goes on in this country based on a sort of tacit understanding that someone would have taken a look at it, so it must be safe, let's just get through the day. It's not. What we've discovered here in Delhi is that these people were asleep. A fire broke out at 3.30 in the morning. Most people were in their beds. Everything went wrong. The hotel was, the corridors had wood paneling that caught on fire and it made it impossible for people to run out of those corridors. The fire exits were locked because, or blocked by material of some sort, storage material, staircases being used as storage. The staircases that were available had no lights and so people started a stampede, they fell over each other and got injured and that staircase got blocked. No one called the fire services till almost an hour later when it was too late. Even when the fire service did attempt to get there, they couldn't reach because apparently that road had all been blocked and there was no divider turn and they couldn't make a U-turn and they had to drive around. The hotel had actually broken the rules completely and built 
an extra floor, more than they had the permission to do so. The MCD had not conducted any sort of routine checks and had actually given permission to this hotel to have a kitchen on the top floor, which it had no business having. The fire department had not continue, con uh, con conducted regular checks either. So you and I go out on a daily basis to restaurants, to malls, to movie theatres, to hotels. Do you realise that there is nobody taking responsibility for our lives? And this is our capital city. On the show with me is Sai the Bas, the political analyst, speaking on behalf of the Ahmadmi Party that is not here at this point, Baskar Ghosh with the BJP, SK Dheri, former chief fire officer of Delhi, Vandana Kohli is a concerned citizen. Santosh Kumar is a professor of governance and public policy at the National Institute of Disaster Management. And Dr. Sujay Kandawala is a senior lawyer joining us out of Mumbai. My first question is to Vandana Kohli, who joins us as a citizen. Vandanaji, as a citizen in Delhi, the, the details that have emerged out of this fire and the fact that nobody is willing to take any responsibility, how does this make you feel as a citizen? It feels absolutely terrible, Faye, because uh, these stories are co uh, absolutely tragic. They get even more tragic. It seems with every incident, we are not learning what we need to do. What are the systems that we need to put into place? And the biggest problem which I think comes up is not that we don't have enough departments, but there is absolutely no confluence between different departments and different agencies and different authorities. As your reporter said earlier, it seems like passing the buck. We, don't, we are not responsible for this. They are supposed to do this or those guys are supposed to do this. We have the systems in place, but the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. And so the result is this. And the biggest problem is, and the greatest concern is, that with every incident where there are so many lives lost, we don't seem to be learning any lessons. In fact, I have a citizen who's written to me on Involve who's, who asks, Aditi Bhardwaj has written in and she says, how can a citizen know if a, if a particular building is following safety norms or no? It's true. You can't know. It's not your job to know. There are people who have that job. Uh, on, the, on the show with me right now is Bhaskar Ghosh of the BJP. Bhaskar Ghosh, the MCD or the Municipal Corporation of Delhi is run by the BJP. No checks were conducted on this hotel. The hotel's license had just been renewed a few months ago. While it was in violation of all the norms, including an extra flow that it had no permission for, what was the MCD doing and how many people, in your experience, and you live in Delhi, I understand, Mr. Ghosh, how many people in the MCD you think took bribes for this, for issuing that license? Yeah. Well, I think I can't really comment on <laughs> how many people has taken bribe or not, but let me put out some more facts in front of my panelists and, of course, in front of you. This hotel was given a license in 2005. Mm. And this hotel was getting renewal of license. And this structure, which has been made over there, there was a rooftop restaurant, there was a basement bar was going on. And when our union minister visited, they found that exit, is, exit uh, uh, passage is absolutely narrow and it was locked. So it is a matter of... Uh, it, it's a matter of coincidence of so many odd factors coincidence, which has taken place not. apart from the short circuit is obviously no, the no, reason one second. for... No, no, one second. Let me just go back. What, which union minister visited the, the hotel? When was this? And why was there? Why was the hotel not shut down immediately? Uh, the, our union minister, Mr. K.J. Alphonse, he has visited there. In when the when did he, he visit? He found, quote unquote, that exit was too narrow and it was locked. Uh, he visited yesterday. after maybe the yesterday. fire. That's not my if point, Bhaskar Ghosh. I don't, I don't want to know who went to facts. do a do a photo op after the fire. I want to know. The BJP runs the MCD no, in Delhi. I am just giving the facts. No, no, don't, don't give me facts that are irrelevant. Answer the question I'm asking. Answer the question I'm asking you. Now, here's what we have. You, you are right. The hotel was built many, many years ago, but its license was renewed last year. Why was the license issued to a hotel that was, was violating all the rules? 2017, when we came to the power of NDMC. No, no, license was renewed in 2018. Why was the license renewed for a hotel that was violating all the rules?
No, there is a one there is a structural violation which has nothing to do with the uh, you know licensing given because licensing is renewed on certain uh, parameters. But what this are these structure parameters? was uh, um, unauthorized structure was built much before the license. Yeah, the parameters is there. Safety parameters was there. Mostly the safety parameters has taken into considerations. And mostly oh. safety parameters are taking consideration. But you just for said, having a license Pastor for Ghosh, the bar, let me tell you what safety parameters are. But this you just said, hang on, deletion. hang on, you just said that the fire exits were too narrow. I'll tell you the list. There was no panic alarm, there was no emergency exit, there was unauthorized, there was a kitchen running on the locked. rooftop, there was, was a bar locked. running on the rooftop that was unauthorized, unauthorized kitchen in the basement, combustible plastic material partition on the wall and no proper signage display apart from several other violations. Last renewal was done May 25th, 2018. Why was this renewal done if the hotel was not safe? Why was it not shut down? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean to say. This is the combustible material which is used for day-to-day -day functioning of kitchen. But the question is that because of the structural deviation they have done much before, uh, perhaps, uh, the inquiry is still on, and there is a narrow passage exit, so live, 17 lives could, could not be saved because of the, uh, the, uh, well, the, the, these problems or the, these reasons. Why was what I mean to the say license that renewed when these problems inquiry, existed, the report, Mr. Bhaskar Let the Ghosh. inquiry report comes out. Let the inquiry report comes out. No, 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 no. no. Police, police. You know what? I've learned, I've learned Sorry. a very long, hard lesson here on this channel that every time a politician or a government tells me, wait for the inquiry report, they mean and they hope that we will forget about it. Now, first of all, let me save both you and me a lot of time. We don't forget. I actually have a chart on my in my office where we list out all of these problems and we keep coming back to them once a month. So I'm not going to forget. So you're going to hope that I forget. I will not forget. So you might as well answer now. Why is it that the MCD renewed a license for a hotel that was obviously a death trap and would kill everybody if there was ever a fire? Because there was a fire and it did kill people. Charred bodies were found in rooms in their beds. Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh, someone in the MCD run by your BJP that promised us a Brashtachar Mukt Bharat handed out a license to a hotel that was unfit to run a business. Please tell me why. And if your only answer okay, is it must I have been corruption, I, will accept, I would appreciate what that I want answer. To no, 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 no. Please, please do not have a linear relation between the uh, death of, of course, death is absolutely unfortunate. Even the Prime Minister has immediately... This is not uh, unfortunate, it's his, mass murder. Uh, uh, um, uh, he's concerned about the entire thing. But the question is, until unless the NDMC in, in, in inspections or investigation, Delhi police is also investigating, let the investigation comes and find that, okay, what are, who are the lapses? And there was... Uh, already there's an announcement that anyone who has found to be lapses will be will be taken into task. Oh, so question is if, that if I had one if, rupee uh, for every time someone just, in government uh, said that point that there are bribes taken by NDMC uh, and right. So let let that come because I see the lot of a uh, lot of short circuit uh, re, um, issues are coming. Uh, that structural uh, Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh, I'll ask you a straightforward uh, question. You can running, choose to answer uh, yes or no. Are the members of the MCD corrupt? If I have to say yes or no, I have no answer. Because until unless the corruption uh, cases are proved, we cannot say they are corrupt. Are the members of the MCD completely there should be inept and unable proof. to do their job? Are they incompetent? Yeah, I mean, they apparently it shows that there is a, there is a lapse of uh, duties from all angles, from different authorities. But to pinpoint and uh, finalize it and to uh, come to a conclusion, of course, it, it needs a lot of documentation, a lot of, proven, uh, a lot of proven facts. And if that come technically, obviously. Uh, okay. So, Bhaskar Ghosh, in my trust. opinion, there's only one of two things. Either the BJP run MCD which is the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, is incompetent and unable to do their jobs, in which case we should throw them all out and get new ones. Or they're very competent and know how to do their jobs, and they're corrupt and actually accepted money in return for lives, in which case we should throw them all out and get new ones. So I, I, it's actually leading us all to the same destination. But 
I, I appreciate the fact that you want to actually, you want an inquiry to find out which one it is. Are they corrupt or are they incompetent? Because I don't see a third option. S.K. Dheri is a former chief fire officer of Delhi. Mr. Dheri, thank you so much for giving us your time. Is this a case of incompetence on behalf of the people who issued the license? Uh, let me clarify first of all about uh, this sort of a thing because there is a living example of a fire cinema where the multiplicity authority had issued the licenses and given the clearances for functioning of that uh, uh, cinema hall which had a fire in the morning and again it broke out in the afternoon at about 3.30 show and killed about 59 people. When the inquiry were conducted and things were finalized, no department was spared in that case. I remember the compensation to the extent of crores of rupees were paid by the fire services, electricity department, the MCD, the police, everybody was penalized in that case and even the officers were not spared in that case, you know. I remember I had broken my spine, my collarbone, my shoulder bone while doing the firefighting and rescue operation of Har and I landed up in a hospital and after three months when I got up, I had to face the CBI inquiry for almost about eight to ten hours to give the complete replies to them and based on that, in information and what other information they had gathered, they could fix the officers and the other responsible people who had violated the safety norms and allowed this sort of thing to function, and they were penalized in that case. Sai Abbas of the Ahmadmi Party. We understand that the fire department in Delhi is completely understaffed. What is the Delhi government doing and does it not think of it as important? Does it not think it important to staff the fire department? Lives are cheap in Delhi apparently. Sai Abbas. Def uh, well, uh, definitely Spey. I speak as a, an uh, analyst here. I was a former Ahmadmi Party MLA candidate, so I'd like to present. Hang on, my where is the Ahmadmi Party? Did they not think it impossible? Uh, important? Yes, one, second, one second, with you. one second. One second, Sayed Abbas. Uh, let me just ask my team. Did the Ahmadmi Party not think it important to be part of this conversation? They didn't want to come. Okay, so sorry, Abbas. I apologize to my viewers. Sayed Abbas is Please. not with the Ahmadmi Party. He's a former member of the Ahmadmi Party. The Ahmadmi Party that runs the city of Delhi thought this was not important enough for their time. They have chosen not to be part of this conversation. They were not part of conversations on our channel yesterday either. So, they're not taking responsibility for the fire department that reports to the Delhi government. The Delhi but government staff. Oh, I do definitely... you? Please go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, I def. Yes, no. yes, Faye. Uh, so my stand here is Faye with the, my little experience in the elections. Let me let me share the nexus here and let me speak as a citizen's voice, which I started two years back on your channel. I'll tell you what is happening, not just Delhi, even in Bangalore, even otherwise, mostly in Delhi. What we see is the nexus. The corporators, the municipal corporators are hand in glove with the hotels. They invest about five crore during the elections, five to ten crore just to win an corporator seat. So therefore, they want to get it back in return. They want a return on investment. Therefore, they have a hand in glove nexus with the hotel management where they approve. Akram, uh, Sakrama is approved. Uh, another extension of another floor approved. Kitchen in the uh, terrace approved, basement approved without any fire security norms. It is so unfortunate. Where we are seeing is these elections are run on money, won on money and their votes. It is this thing like you said, this has to be stopped. It is very unfortunate for us to see a situation like this. 17 lives lost. It could have been anybody's family. It could be mine okay. or anyone else. And okay. that is very shocking when okay. something like in fact, this happens. Oh, Alright, I understand what you're saying. In fact, let's try and get the Ahmadi party on the phone line as well. Uh, let me just bring in the other members of the panel. Santosh uh, Kumar is a professor in the National Institute of Disaster Management. Mr. Kumar, uh, there's obviously been a massive case of letdown here by a, a breakdown of, of protocol in members of local government. Who needs to be held responsible? Because my worry here is that all members of government will turn around and say, wait for a report, wait for an inquiry, wait for a report, and then nothing ever happens. In your opinion, who's responsible for the 17 lives that were lost? Uh, 
It's very interesting to note uh, that, uh, that who is responsible. Somebody is responsible. Definitely the fire has happened. And when you do the cause and effect analysis, then you will find that what were the causes and, uh, and uh, who actually dealing with those causes. And that would, be very, that would be very clear picture. It will come that who was the responsible. But the second question comes is that how this could have been prevented. And then probably that would be a kind of a thing which we can analyze it properly. Like say, even if that hotel has this kind of a license renewed, now the second is that whether the entire uh, the building was in order, meaning thereby, meaning thereby, meaning the staff who was supposed to be attending, if such kind of eventualities happen, whether they were adequately trained, whether they were actually exposed to such kind of practices when the fire happens and the fire extinguisher has to be operated. Number one. Number two, whether the is uh, this fire alarm was coming again and again that it was not working well that the smoke Working. immersed and it did not give the fire uh, fire alarm people would have survived so this is when we are going and try to analyze each kind of a building uh, that causes that why it has happened and then we'll find out whether the other building of such kind of a hotels which are working in delhi are they are also on those parameters are they safe enough to go as a and go and stay there so that is a time where now we are talking about no, the safety Santosh audit. Santosh Kumar, Santosh Kumar, let me just tell you, let me just tell you what what Even was happening offices, here. Okay, and yeah. I want to bring in Dr. Sujay Kantawala. Uh, Dr. Kantawala, this is what happened. The fire alarm did not go off. The employees of the hotel had actually locked the doors for the night, which meant that people had nowhere to run to. They were all trapped. There were a total of 53 guests in that hotel. 35 are injured and 17 are dead, which means that nobody got out, you know, without a scratch. Everybody got hurt in one way or the other. The employees called the fire department about after 40 minutes of this fire. The fire started on one floor and then spread to all floors because the whole thing was combustible and it was like a tinderbox. People died in their rooms because there was no place to go. So obviously, without a shadow of doubt, the owner of the hotel who is currently absconding is fully responsible for multiple counts of murder. But my bigger problem is that government that is meant to keep people like this from running establishments where people will die has done absolutely absolutely nothing. Sujay Kantawala, do you believe that it's just the owner of the hotel who should be held accountable or members of the MCD as well who continued to renew his license? Everyone who was connected to this has to be held accountable, including the corrupt officials of the MCD. When Kamala Mills happened, the BMC suspended several officials. Action was taken immediately. They are named as accused in the charge sheet. But here we see that the crime scene has been visited by a union minister. And the union minister has personally observed that the exit was virtually impossible to even cross. So if your exit is virtually impossible to cross, and I'm glad that we have this statement on uh, uh, in front of the entire nation. Then that's the end of the matter. Where do you need an inquiry? This clearly proves the culpability of the owner who is absconding. His bail should be opposed. He will try to obtain anticipatory bail. The government should put all their best counsels on the job. And like we handled Sunil Shitab's case yes. uh, in the Ghatkobar crash over here, he's still inside. His bail was rejected by the High Court also where culpable homicide uh, charge was there, 10 years he is facing. Same thing has to be done here. And Faye, I'll tell you one more thing. I think now we should go across 304 and go to 302 because this is blatant murder. This is mass murder with intent. All permissions which were taken were fake, fabricated, forged and, and as, as a result of inducement and corruption. They are non-est in law. They don't exist. You have an illegal you have an illegal basement you have exit doors which don't open you have fire equipment which doesn't work you have employees who must have come from some small towns here and there underage people who lock the whole hotel and go away because they want to go and sleep somewhere exactly. you have exactly. the whole lane where you cannot allow the fire engine to come inside freely yes. now this is what this is what the uh, the people we we uh, as indian citizens every day we face Fire, manhole, pothole, corruption, and this is what is happening. 
constitution is violated absolutely. every absolutely. day by these people as far as we indian citizens are concerned absolutely vandana vandana ji go on it is high time that we rise up and we see to it and yes we, please we, absolutely we see to it that the statement made by mr abbas over here that agree. 10 crores is taken for election as corruption money i completely agree with dr kantawala i cannot agree more with him we have yes go ahead go ahead vandana ji go ahead Yes I completely agree with Dr Kantawala uh, he has listed it out absolutely the, the the concerns he has listed out we have a callous attitude towards safety any way you look we have a callous attitude towards cleanliness and orderliness and we have a callous attitude towards safety and actually fay they intersect because when you have a place which is designed as a fire exit and you have no sense of cleanliness and no sense of orderliness and you stock stuff there which is not meant to be stocked yes. you're putting stuff on staircases which is not meant to be done you are creating a safety hazard everywhere do you remember the kind of uh, hazards that have happened when the brt was being made how many people a biker at least i know lost his life because you have malba here you have broken stones here you have open manholes nobody who is supposed to be checking on the ground checking every single week or every single second day you think we have a we have a dearth of people in this country we have a dearth of labor in this country no we have a dearth of accountability in this country nobody who's supposed to be on the ground who's supposed to make those checks makes those checks and that is why we are there and i want to i am very glad you have someone from the upar tragedy here the gentleman said but do you know how many years ago the upar tragedy happened do we have to wait every time for a family to be completely shattered because somebody is dead for us to bring this to talk about this again over and over again i have an architect friend in bombay i want to bring say this on on screen he, this person tells me that the buildings are built and given permission nocs are given uh, given without there being enough passage way behind the building in case there is a fire for any kind of vehicle to come there we don't have a single we don't have we have absolutely yes. no sense of master planning if <clears throat> there is a hotel where is the exit where is the second exit yes. if there is a, a well, fire well i just want to i just want to point uh, out a, a yes 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 vandra i want to i want to point out go on and on and on that fire safety laws and rules are very very clear in our country they are very clear of how these things need to function what rules need to be followed the problem is in implementation because government that's actually implementing and handing out licenses is nothing but corrupt and they are willing to accept money in return for our lives and this is something we have to realize very very clearly in this country as citizens every time you vote remember not to vote for a government that will actually result in a fire like this because that's how cheap your life is agencies responsible in this particular case first of all the north delhi municipal corporation run by the bjp it issues an noc for the building structure it issues an noc for health and food both of these nocs were issued to this hotel that had a restaurant functioning on the terrace the terrace that you can see that is currently on fire that that was on fire the one where the fire started and it had a restaurant and a kitchen running in the basement it had no business running either it had no it was not safe but the ncd delhi north issued that license that's run by the bjp for our viewers benefit the delhi fire department comes under the delhi government run by the aam aadmi party now this fire department is supposed to conduct fire safety measures and checks every 3 years and issue an noc the first noc is issued during the building construction and after that they have to have random checks this fire department is comes under the delhi government of the aam aadmi party also the delhi police comes under the center ruled by the bjp needs to conduct regular checks to make sure that everything is running properly it has to examine on a regular basis the nocs from the fire department and the municipal corporation it also issues a liquor license and finally the excise department that comes under the delhi government ruled by the aam aadmi party two counts for the aam aadmi party two counts for the bjp nothing for the citizen saurav bhardwaj from the aam aadmi party joins us right now saurav bhardwaj thank you for being kind enough to join us on the phone could you please tell us why the fire department in delhi tells us it's understaffed 
doesn't come doesn't that come under the aam aadmi party why hasn't the delhi government staffed its fire department adequately ah uh, that's a very interesting question mm. and uh, you will be surprised and i'm sure many of your viewers will be surprised to know mm. that forget putting staff in the fire department we cannot even ask the question that what is the vacancy in fire department we cannot even ask a question in vidhan sabha about what are the vacancies of teachers in schools because the service the so called service department lies under the lg mm. although during the sheila dikshit government services which includes hiring uh, vacancies transfers postings disciplinary action everything was with the chief minister but after uh the central government came to the power this one in 2014 they brought a new notification through which they took away the services department from the uh, delhi government uh, and gave it to lg however tomorrow we are waiting anxiously for the supreme court judgment and hopefully that comes back to us i just want to ask you um, and i do believe that on the 4th of april last year the aam aadmi party put out a report card Mr Bhardwaj where you listed out this exact problem and you said the honorable LG is not giving us permission to access services now in that report you listed out the departments the sanctioned posts the vacant posts and the percentage of the posts that were vacant all fair the home department is not on this list the fire department comes under home department did you not feel at the time that you were generating this list that the home department is part of the aam aadmi party's led state government and why is it that the home department and the fire department are not listed on your list uh i don't know about the list but it oh. could be because of two reasons you know there could be two probable reasons one is probably they listed it listed those vacancies under some other head or it could be they could not generate those vacancies because i am telling you i myself put a question in my vidhan sabha it was my start question about vacancies in different departments no no stick to the point stick to the yeah. point let me ask you yeah, one more question I'm fine you've made your point about that. vacancies oh that's right. points right. taken and we will wait for the supreme court to give us judgment as well right. right i want to ask you about the excise department the excise department comes under the state government run by the aam aadmi party yes or no yes ma'am yes, yes ma it does the excise department also issues licenses to hotels like the one that was uh, that was in this fire this right. like this hotel had a license from the excise department can you right. please tell me why that license was issued to a bar on the terrace that had no municipal uh, or you know that didn't have the permissions that it was supposed to have i'll i'll give you a straight answer please do assuming that the fire department officers in connivance with the hotel gave away the fire license and the excise department in active connivance with the hotelier took money as bribe and gave them you know excise license assuming it that is true and even if i have the proofs and even if i have a knowledge you will be surprised to know neither me nor my minister mm. nor my chief minister can even transfer an officer mr bhardwaj are you a citizen are you a citizen of india I am a citizen of India. I am a citizen. I do of believe, Mr. Bharathwaj, yes. that citizens of India have the ability to file complaints with the with the local police mm -hmm. about corruption under the Prevention of Corruption Act. Is that not true? That's true. How many complaints have you filed with the local police about this I, alleged corruption that you talk about? I personally would have filed more than eighty-three complaints, and not just in my personal capacity. I have tried to file complaints even through Vidhan Sabha committees. which whose whole sole aim is to fix accountability of officers of the delhi government you'll be surprised to know in spite of giving proofs against the sitting ias officers in delhi government mm. we have given proofs the lg did not do anything against them well you'll i don't be believe with the lg who has to do something when you file a complaint a police complaint yes, of yes, that yes, kind yes, is yes, of a criminal nature yes. and needs to be looked at by yes. the police dr yes. sujay kanthawala uh, there's something yes. horribly I rotten think. about a system where everybody talks about corruption but nobody does anything dr kanthawala <coughs> Yes, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess uh, this routine check theory and seeing everything as a way routine way of life uh, has played uh, and gone into our bone marrow now. Very sad to uh, realize that. But let us talk about the tragedy of Kamala Mills. Fe, uh, mm. you and I as Mumbaiers, we have been through that horrible tragedy. Your studio was completely destroyed. You know, you know what uh, hell you have been through in that. 
Now, uh, in that, what happened was we had filed a PIL. Mr. Julio Ribeiro, even at the age of 90, was concerned. We filed the PIL in Mumbai High Court. Mumbai High Court appointed the Savant Committee, retired Chief Justice, and scathing observations in respect of each and everyone concerned, including, in fact, even I should appreciate Mr. Ajay Mehta himself conducted an inquiry and himself indicted his own officers, gave suggestions. But what has happened after that? Do you realize what has happened after that? So the problem is that despite having indictments, despite having scathing observations, still it goes on. And that is what the gentleman just now over here said, that there is corruption everywhere. Uh, the excise guy, the fire guy, everyone is in connivance with hotel owner. And so many such hotels would be existing. There is no status report as regards what are the checks which are conducted. They are supposed to be conducted twice a year. They can't be routine perfunctory checks. They have to be proper checks. So therefore, this clearly shows that human life in our country is absolutely worthless. In fact, I want, I want Bhaskar Ghosh time. and... We are just lucky to be alive every day. I want Bhaskar Ghosh and uh, Mr. Bhardwaj of the Ahmadmi Party to listen to this. Now, one of the victims who died was 38-year-old Arvind, who worked for Eastman Exports Company, who had travelled to Delhi along with a colleague for a meeting and was staying at the Arpit Palace Hotel. His cousin, Swatna Rajesh, had to travel from Tamil Nadu to Delhi to collect his body. Take a look. Actually, there was a call from my uh, cousin, uh, my brother, that uh, some accident happened in Delhi. But we doesn't know that it was so serious. We thought that maybe some minor incident would be happening. But we can't say, we can't express that. How to, uh, but we came to know in the evening that he is gone. Uh, till now we haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Can't express what to say. What? He is my cousin brother. He is working in Eastman Exports, and he came here to attend a buyer meeting. And he and his colleague are staying there on Monday night. They are used to return by Tuesday morning, it seems. But this tragic incident happens in the 4:30 in the morning. Nand Kumar Krishnaswamy was also visiting Delhi for two days for a business meeting with his colleague. Both of them died in that deadly farmer fire. Swami has, is survived by his wife and a two-year-old baby. Take a look. He's my younger brother. His name was Nanda Kumar. He was 32 years old. He just came for work to from the company side, just for a meeting. He he came on Sunday, and it it happened yesterday. It happened this fire incident in the hotel, and there is no proper information how this fire has been occurred and it's not a proper details no no one is giving any proper information what, what, what is the case of this occurrence of this fire i got the information from the company i think from from here the information has been spread to the company from the company they they are informed yes. people who travel to delhi for one meeting for one day from other parts of the country are dead people jumped out of their rooms and fell to their deaths because there was nowhere to go. Bhaskar Ghosh, as a representative of the party that runs the, Mumba, the, runs the Municipal Corporation of Delhi that handed out licenses to this extremely illegal hotel, would you make a statement right now to the family members of those who died in this tragedy? So it's very unfortunate. It's not unfortunate. Here, uh, Murder is never unfortunate. Place, Murder are, is a maybe, crime. Uh, Don't call it unfortunate. Yeah. Unfortunate is when an accident happens and nobody sees it coming. No, the question this is, is a crime. that... The... So, what, so what I mean to say that, uh, as, I, as, I te as I told you in the beginning of this discussion, that if there is any lapses found if by the lapses, authorities... Uh, which is if, run by the by Do you have party, doubts that there will be lapses, Mr. Ghosh? What do you mean lapses? It's all the, there. The, sorry? What do you mean if what there kind are lapses? Of response is, this? is there any doubt that there were lapses, no, Mr. No, Ghosh? No, no, you, you can't say like this because this is, this isn't, no, there was a short circuit and the, from the short circuit, 
the entire things has happened and which is a legal construction legal constructions and everything has to be probed and uh, the proper report Mr. has to come. Ghosh, when, but when the BJP said Brashtachar Mukt Bharat, uh, what did you mean? Brashtachar Mukt so Bharat means if, he, if anyone found to be corrupted, obviously the actions will be taken against him. We are talking about Aam Aadmi Party, even an Aam Aadmi Party, even the MLAs are, are um, accused of the same corruptions and they are talking about taking action. So what you're saying, this, Bhaskar Ghosh, is that when you say Brashtachar Mukt Bharat, you don't mean that you will stop corruption. So, you mean that when there is corruption and it costs us 17 lives and our loved ones die, you will then order an inquiry and you will tell us to wait and you will wait for the ashes to be... Uh, to actually cool off and you'll wait for us to forget and then based on the inquiry you may or may not do something about it. Is that what you mean by Brashtachar Mukhtar? Not at all, not at all, not at all. I strongly object. Okay. See, we are already, we are already formulating the policies which should prevent the corruptions. We are already um, uh, formulating the process. You've been in power for two years. What were you doing for the, the first corruption. two years? In spite of that corruption happens, we will bring them to the policy we to will prevent corruption in front of the uh, law and we will take in them into task. How many people in the MCD Sorry? have you found guilty of corruption and removed in the last two years since you took over? You did say, and I remember very clearly, the BJP's uh, you know, campaign for the MCD, which was a very successful campaign, you said it was very corrupt and the only way to clean it up was to bring in the BJP. And the people of Delhi heard you quite clearly and they brought you in. So congratulations on that win. It was two years ago. How many people have you removed or transferred or prosecuted for corruption in the MCD since you took over two years ago? Honestly, I, way I don't have these figures in front of me, so I cannot say by figure how many people, but obviously have in any the at political all? management Even of the city, we try to be as transparent any at all? as possible. We have made entire thing eat tender. We, have, we you, have, have you prosecuted the, any at uh, all? You might not have the exact so number, but have you prosecuted even this? one, Mr. Ghosh? These very corrupt officials that you ran a campaign against when you came to power, have any of them been prosecuted or transferred or brought to book? See, I, say, I, I cannot misguide you that I know uh, these statistics even one. But obviously, I think uh, the, the way the MCD is coming up with the transparency, coming up <clears> with the more accountability and the laws so, which are being more transparent now will yes. obviously... Mr. Ghosh, will, is it not true? Last the, question, no, Mr. Ghosh, is it Faye, not true that the BJP has controlled the MCD now for 18 years? Sorry? How long has the BJP run the MCD for? We just got in for 2017. Well, who, was, who was running the MCD before that? Mr. Ghosh? Who was running the MCD before you took over in 2017? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we were repeating that. It was the BJP. And the, and, and the term before that? Let's go back 15 years, 18 years in fact. How long have you been running the MCD? Yeah. How long have you been running the MCD, Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh? Audio ni. Audio ni, eh? Let me try again. I mean, told by my team that you, you can hear me quite well. How long has the BJP been in power in the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, Mr. Bhaskar Ghosh? I, I don't know exact, exact number of years, but uh, I, I think a uh, pretty long time we are there in MCD. 18 years. Now, please tell me why we shouldn't hold you responsible for the 17 yeah. people who are dead in this fire. 
which means that you're not just responsible that, that, for this one fire, you are responsible for all of Karol Bagh. Because you could have fixed Karol Bagh. Every hotel in Karol Bagh next to each other is a death trap, a fire trap. You could have fixed this. You had 18 years, one eight, 18 years, nearly two decades, and you're telling me that you had nothing, that there was nothing you can do. You want me to wait for an inquiry? You have the audacity to ask these people no, who've lost their loved ones to 18, wait for an inquiry? Years, we must have job come. We must have done the commendable jobs. We must have done the commendable jobs. Otherwise, why, how we can continue for 18 years? You know, I do not know the answer to that question either. My point here is with these 17 people. And if you think, if you think your answer tonight to these 17 families is that you must have done a commendable job, which is why they keep bringing you back, where there's nothing but layered corruption from every agency in Delhi. And if there's anyone who could have saved these 17 lives, it's the Municipal Corporation of Delhi who could have taken away the license of this hotel and made sure that nobody was sleeping in those rooms that night. This is on you. This blood on your hands. The officers of the MCD North who were in charge of Karol Bagh are murderers. No answers will be good enough other than simple FIRs listed against them. This business of we will see if there was a lapse, if there was a, obviously there was a problem. And this is what happens to us every time, every time there is a problem. In Amritsar, where the train ran over 61 people, they told us to wait until there was an inquiry, wait until there was a report. What did the Congress government do? Nothing, not a single arrest. What did the railways do? Nothing, not a single arrest. 61 people died. In this case, 17 people died overnight. And they're telling us to wait for a report. This stretches across politics. It's corruption in which they sell our lives. And they do it all the time. The government could have fixed what is wrong with Karol Bagh. They didn't. They waited for 17 people to die. Ask yourself again, do you have a loved one who's traveling on work and is going to stay in a hotel? It takes an hour to snuff out a life. That's how little our governments care. Thanks for watching.